So section 5.4 of James Stewart's calculus textbook continues with some basic patterns, uh, uh, formulas for indefinite integrals. And these are very predictable. Uh, we've already seen them uh, basically in the earlier part of the chapter. And they also flow nicely uh, from chapter 3 where we were going the other way when we were finding derivatives. Because the fundamental theorem of calculus, um, finding a derivative is the opposite of finding an integral. And so some of the formulas that you learn in chapter 3 for finding derivatives work in reverse uh, for finding integrals. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. Here's an easy one. So the integral of a constant times a function is going to be the constant times the integral of the function. That's exactly the same as the derivative. The derivative of a constant times a function is a constant times the derivative of a function. So that's, that's very predictable. Here's one. The integral of a, uh, of a constant itself, not a constant times a function, but the integral of a constant is going to be the constant times x plus a constant, um, which of course could be 0, in which case it would just be kx. I can tell this is true because if I take the derivative, because of the fundamental theorem of, constant, of calculus, if I take the derivative of this side, I should end up with this. And that's exactly the case. So x to the first power, if I find the derivative of that, it's going to be 1 times the constant. And then I'm going to take the x down a power, which takes it down to x to the 0, which is 1. So you're left with the constant times 1 uh, times 1, which equals the constant. And so, indeed, and of course, the, the, um, the derivative of a constant is 0. So, uh, so we are left with uh, um, this, k, if we go the opposite direction. So that works. Um, now, this one is one that we did in the previous vidcast. Um, and it's, again, very, very predictable uh, that the, the integral of x to the n power is going to be x to the n plus 1 power divided by n plus 1 plus a constant. And of course, we have to stipulate that n does not equal negative 1, because if n equals negative 1, then we're trying to divide by 0. And you're not allowed to do that in this universe. Uh, so basically, um, the, the, uh, this, all, this all works. Now, the way I can verify this is by taking the derivative of this and see if I end up with x to the n. And I do, because uh, the derivative of x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 n plus 1 times 1 over n plus 1 is 1, which leaves me with x to this power minus 1. Well, n plus 1 minus 1 is n. And so I'm left with x to the n. And then, of course, the derivative of a constant is 0. So if I take the derivative of this, I end up with that. And so I know that it's worked. Uh, and so, uh, again, the fundamental theorem of calculus comes along and tells me that finding a derivative is the opposite of finding an integral. And so I, uh, these, are, these are fairly obvious. Now here are ones that are a little harder. The integral of the sine of x is the negative cosine of x. How do I know this? Because it works in reverse. Uh, because the, the, uh, um, I know that the derivative of the cosine of x is the negative sine of x. And so the negative derivative of the cosine of x. The two negatives will cancel each other out. And I'm left with this. And of course, the derivative of a constant is 0. So I know that this is true because this is true. Similarly, I know that the integral of the cosine of x dx is sine of x plus a, plus a constant because the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. So again, I know that this is true because in chapter 3, I learned these formulas. Uh, there are, of course, ones that are a little more complicated. The derivative of the tangent x is the secant squared x. So I know that the integral of secant squared x uh, is the tangent x plus a constant. Similarly, the integral of the cotangent of x is the negative cosecant squared x. So, the, so I know that the integral of the cosecant squared x is going to be the negative uh, cotangent uh, of x. Um, again, it gets a little more complicated. The integral, I mean, the derivative of the secant of x is the secant x times the tangent x. Uh, so I know that the integral of the secant x tangent x is going to be secant x. And finally, uh, because the, the derivative of the cosecant x is the negative cosecant x cotangent x, therefore I know that the integral 
of cosecant x, cotangent x is going to be the negative uh, cosecant x, and of course, plus a, a constant. So this is basically all the formula, uh, the formulae that you learned in chapter three with regard to derivatives in reverse with regard to integrals.